Uh, once again, Vincent Irving, aka DJV, with Tyrone Yarbrough, aka T Bone, the exquisite musician. <laughs> What's I up? Man? Yes, What's iconic up? legend. Been around, monumental, man. All the adverbs and adjectives. I'm sorry that goes with that. So uh, tell us about T Bone. How did that name come about? Well, T Bone started. Um, First, there was a bass player, a well-known bass player, and his name was T-Bone Walker. And so, um, we were out on the road. I was with some of my grand jury buddies. We were out on the road, and we were doing a radio interview. Wow. And our drummer, Quentin Donnelly, we call him QD, um, he says, the interviewer asked me a question, and he said, T-Bone bass man, walk downtown. <laughs> And from that day on, that's what everybody called me, T-Bone. Wow. wow. What year was that? That was probably in 1984. 84, 84 85. Now, I can't let the, the uh, two words slip by. Uh, grand and jury. Uh, grand jury. Yes. How did that very, very famous band here, Kansas City? Grand jury started uh, with some guys from Southeast High School. It started in the late 70s, probably like 79, 80. Um, I, was, I was like a freshman in high school when I first heard of them. And these guys, man, they were bad. But, you know, it was a lot of great musicians out of Southeast. And then they connected with some guys from Lincoln High School. Okay. And they kind of merged together and they came up with this thing, man, where their idea was to do things, even as high schoolers, do it on the level of the professionals. Right and beyond. What would such and such group do? What would the Ohio players do? And so that was their, their whole mindset. And um, at the end of 1983-84, uh, I joined that band wow. and we began to do things around town and then we began to travel. Um, so that was the start of that was the start of uh, Grand Jury Band. Me with Grand Jury. Gotcha, but it started a little bit before. Yes, started a little bit before me. I would say my love of music started very early as a, as a child. Um, my mom would play music all the time. So we had all kinds of, uh, from jazz to, to rap. Back then you had guys like Gil Scott Heron, yep. um, who would, were, were kind of more on the rap side. And Earth, Wind & Fire and Ohio players, just everybody you could think of. Right. So it was always in the house. So my mom would, whenever we would clean up on a Saturday morning, yep. we had music, music, Condition. music, 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 music. <laughs> and I was a creative kid, so I, I did like to, to try and sing, you know, around the house. When I heard the music, I would mimic whomever was singing, mainly like Michael Jackson or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I, I was also creative. I liked to draw and paint, so I would create my own characters. Marvelous. And in creating my own characters, there were there were there were these kind of black superheroes that I would create. Mm -hmm. And so one day, my mom saw this album cover, and she said, "Oh, I know you're gonna love this." Wow. And it was Parliament, Parliament. Funkadelic <laughs> and Bootsy Collins. Yes. I was so blown away and fascinated with the look. That was before I heard the sound, and then I heard the sound, and I was forever in love. Yeah. And that's when I said, "Well, I want to do what Bootsy's doing." <laughs> Bootsy was playing bass, no so doubt. that's what started. Wow, that's Bootsy Collins, yes, Mr. Tyrone Yarborough, A.K.A. T-Bone, grand jury member. Of course, he's going to share with us. Man, you got a large music career. Uh, just pick two or three moments out of there that stick to you. Two or three moments, I would say. One of the first moments is when we were on the road with Grand Jury and we, we decided to go to Minneapolis. Wow. And this was in 1980, late 85, 86. We went to Minneapolis because Prince was hot. Yes. And so we, we had traveled around and, and we had done so many things in Kansas City, we decided to move to Minnesota. And so we did and we, we put our band back together in Minnesota. And when we started playing, we got really popular. Wow. And so Purple Rain had been out. It was the movie in 1984. So 
um, when Purple Rain came out, they filmed it at First Avenue. Yes. And so that became a national tour spot. And just so happened that we ended up meeting some guys uh, and we became pretty much like the house band for <laughs> First Avenue. Wow, wow, just blown away. No doubt. We, um, we would share our rehearsal space with uh, an unknown group called Mint Condition. <laughs> Go so figure. they had a rehearsal space, but they didn't have PA equipment. We had a PA, but we didn't have a rehearsal space. So we allowed Mint Condition to use our PA, and they allowed us to use their rehearsal space. And we ended up having the same management team, and so we, we kind of bonded there. But playing at First Avenue and Prince being there wow. as a youngster, right. that was mind-blowing. Wow. Walking in the joint and Prince is, is up there in the booth <laughs> and we're down there playing. Wow. So that was one of the, one of the great highlights. And yes. their second um, highlight is when we were traveling around as low key. Okay. Um, we were doing a lot of uh, small stops. We were doing what they call the Chitlin circuit. So we were going all around to all the uh, universities, all the little hole in the wall clubs, doing all of this. And as we were touring, we got word, um, and this was probably in 1992, that our record had hit number one wow. on the Billboard charts. Wow. That was a really great moment. I think we were in a, in a high school in Texas. Wow. What record exactly was that? Um, that was I got a thing for you. <laughs> so yeah, that that's one. Um, I mean, there there's so many others, man. No I mean, you know, like we played at Jack the Rapper, and man, we had a great great time. You get got to meet all the entertainers that you uh, grew up idolizing, and some that were your peers. Wow. So you got a chance to meet them and doing all the traveling and things. That was was great. Um, yeah, so, so there's just. Some, a right, there's a whole stories right. You tell. mentioned, of course, uh, can't let that name pass by. Low key, absolutely. Uh, once again, another famous group, not only here but uh, when Nation Ride. How did that come about? Well, Low Key came about. Like I said, we we moved to Minnesota, mm -hmm. Minneapolis, Minnesota, and St. Paul uh, in like 1985, 86, and it was a lot of the members from Low Key. Um, so we were doing our, our thing there and we kind of split for a while. Mm -hmm. Two of our band members, uh, Lance Alexander and Prof T, Tony Tolbert, mm -hmm. stuck around and started writing and producing music. Wow. And uh, they went to a, a music seminar and they met Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis and they said, hey, we want to be like you guys. We want one of those flight time jackets. They had <laughs> these cool bomber jackets right. with their names on it. And they said, well, hey, send me some music. Mm -hmm. So the guys put together some music. They sent it to them. And uh, about a month later, they got a phone call and said, hey, we want to we want to sign you as producers. Wow. So they did that for maybe six months. And the music they were doing, the uh, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, they liked it so much. They said, hey, man, you guys need to put together a band. Wow. And they said, hey, we got a band. And they called, <laughs> they called myself. They called Darren Story and they called Andre Shepard. Mm -hmm. um, and Andre is out of St. Louis. The rest of us uh, are out of Kansas City. We went to Lance and myself went to Southeast High School. Right. Um, Darren and, and Prof Tony Tolbert went to Lincoln. Right. So that again is that's that Lincoln Southeast connection. Right. And then we brought in Dre from St. Louis, and man, that <laughs> that created low key. What, now, what year was that? That was in 1990. Wow. Actually, the, the end of 89 is when we got the call that we were, were, were going to be signed and we, we moved up to Minnesota. That's beautiful. So it was the end of 89 when I got the phone call and said, hey, let's go. That's nice. Now, you mentioned the high school, Southeast and Lincoln, uh, mm -hmm. very famous for band competitions. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, drill team uh, at the field house. Uh, that's kind of where I started at, man. Y'all were going back and forth with each other. Uh, as well. You were in band as well. Yes, I was in band and, and um, I played percussion um, in band and I, and my music teacher was Charles Dorch. Dorch. Yes. Mr. Dorch, he, <laughs> man, 
he actually gave me my first paid gig as a musician. Wow. So it was me and uh, like three other guys. He came up to us and asked us if we would do a uh, fashion show. We would play some music. And so he gave us uh, a list of two or three songs that he wanted us to play and then we could play whatever else. Right. And so that was the first time being paid wow. to do a gig. And I was wow. like, so what? that was what, late 70s? No, that was in, in actually 19, I think it was 1982. Wow, so that was it right there. 1982, uh, Charles Dorch. Beautiful. He, uh, mentor, and he actually uh, went on to manage us for a little while as low key. But he was always partly responsible for the guys of Grand Jury because, again, they started at Southeast. Right. And that was under his tutelage. Wow, go figure. We would have put that history together, man. That's marvelous. So, Mr. Dorch, Charles Dorch, uh, being our music teacher up at Southeast, he was a, a great influence on many, many, many students. Right. And they still talk about him, you know, today. And he passed uh, maybe like three or four years ago. Wow. Um, but he was actually. He was the first music director at my church. Really? And so I got to see him in, in two oh. different areas. Right. And so I got to, to know him pretty well. And uh, so he had a big influence on my life in terms of um, my love of music and the respect of music. Mm -hmm. um, you know, every song is not your favorite song, but it's somebody's favorite song. So you got to act like it is. <laughs> right. You got to treat it like that. That was one of the things that he always see it, you know, so. I've, I've always been writing and, and uh, doing production, so I'm recording all the time, um, you know, always tinkering with music. And so, um, we actually have lots of songs that are low-key songs. <laughs> we have not released them yet, but gotcha. we, we have them in the, in the uh, can. Gotcha. So, you know, hopefully this year you'll get get a chance to hear some of that stuff. I think it's really good. Okay. I think it's it's a it's a little refreshing. I think what we're doing is kind of refreshing because it 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 takes you back to the old a little bit. Right. Where you had more instrumentation. Right. And it gives you the new and fresh sound. So I I, I think it it'll be a, a a nice, fresh, pleasant experience for the Kansas City listener. And for me Personally, I'm I'm still doing that. I actually have a program where I show kids how to uh, write and record their own music. Really? Um, I have a program called Media, okay. and that's uh, music uh, education, digital interface to arts, okay. showing uh, kids how to write and record their own music. Just how to basically turn a, your idea into a song. Right. And one of the big pieces, I think. Uh, uh, for media is to show kids that you don't just have to be the rapper, you don't have to just be the entertainer. Right. You might be the engineer. Right. You might be the guy who is uh, the songwriter. Right. You might be the producer. So we we try to show them that there are other avenues that you can take if you're interested in music. You don't just have to be the artist. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, the superstars are very rare. Right. But the engineers are not. <laughs> the, engineers, <laughs> the engineers work long after a lot of your, you know, so-called stars right. are gone. So a producer can continue to work long after the star is right. moved on. So we try to share those types of things with them um, in in our program media. And when I say R, I'm talking about my, my cousin, Cartez Addison. Okay. Um, he is, uh, he partners with me in uh, the media program. And we've been doing it for about six years now. Oh, wow. And we really, we really love to interact with the kids and we love to see their eyes light up when they, when they come up with something and they're able to record it. Right. And we show them how to create the music and the beats and things and they, they start to feel good about themselves. They start to walk in with a little swag. Right, for sure. Now that they're they're doing their own thing. So that's a lot of what I'm doing. I, I work uh, at my church, so I still do music. Right, all the time. All what the church time. would that be? 
that's uh, St. James United Methodist Church. Okay. Um, um, Dr. Emmanuel Cleaver the third is the pastor there. So if you ever want a a good word from a strong biblical teacher, he's the um, guy. Oh man, he's the guy, man. Now, with your program, what do you what does that take place at? Our Media. program is at uh, right now we're housed at Genesis School. Okay. Genesis at the 43rd in Cleveland location. Mm -hmm. um, of course, nobody's at school right now because of the coronavirus. Right. But. Um, that is where we're housed now, and, and we really enjoy interacting with the kids, and and like I said, seeing their light come on right. when they experience themselves doing and creating. Right. So with that, if anyone wants to see any of your work, uh, are you on your social media thing or what? How can people maybe contact you? Just see some of the things that you've done, or even want to uh, chime in with the media program. Um, well, you can hit me up on Facebook for, for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, you can just message me there. I, I don't do a whole, whole lot of social media. Gotcha. Um, uh, Tez does more than me, Cartez does. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you hit me up on Facebook, um, you know, you can always message me there and, and I'll try to get back with you. You can uh, check out our Low Key page. Okay. We do have a, a page for Low Key. Okay. Um, on Facebook? On Facebook. Yeah. yeah. We, we do have a, I think we have an IG as well. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and it's manned by one of our members, so gotcha. somebody will always get back with you. So that's probably the best way to, to get in contact with me. Okay, sounds good. Well, DJs and Entertainment definitely appreciates you taking out the time to share. You have officially been documented uh, in the history of Kansas City and beyond. Well, I appreciate it, man. I just wanted to say that there are so many uh, positive influences in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. The young talent is tremendous. Um, it's just unbelievable what some of the, the, the people are doing, and I'm really proud of all that we have. I could name so many. Um, and I want to give a shout out to all of the guys who inspired and helped me, myself, and, and other musicians like me coming up. We had a lot of good help from, from guys from KCK mm -hmm. to Kansas City, Missouri. So right. they all really did show us love as we were coming up. I mean, you know. Bands like Unidos. I don't know if you remember Unidos. Yes, I do. Yes, the I Unidos do. show band. We yeah. had guys like uh, uh, Threatening Weather. We mm -hmm. had guys like Sweet and Sticky. Wow. And, uh, the Forest show band. Mm -hmm. You know, so we had lots and lots of guys who really took us as grand jury under their wings and um, kind of showed us uh, the ropes a little bit. And then. Uh, you know, we tried to do some of that for the guys who came up after us. Right. There's so many super, super talented guys that I'd like to call their names out, but I'd be all day doing Right, that. right, for sure, for but sure. But I just, you know, but if, if you get a chance to watch it, right. I want all of our Kansas City talent to know that I appreciate you and I'm, I'm proud of what you're doing. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.